Next on Startup, we head to Montpelier, Vermont to talk to Sarah, the owner of Bailey Road. Then we head over to Concord, New Hampshire to talk to Chris and Brett, the owners of Double Midnight Comics. All of this and more is next on Startup. There is nothing easy about starting a small business. A Baker's Tale, all natural and gluten-free cookies, tarts, pies, and cakes online. A Baker's Tale is proud to support Startup and all of the entrepreneurs out there trying to sweeten their own story of success. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is proud to support Startup and all the dreamers, thinkers, and doers. Pure Michigan, ready for the next big thing. You've written your own story of success, and it shows. Chrysler is proud to support Startup and all the people out there who define their own success. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail, so I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. On Main Street in Montpelier, Vermont, and I'm going to go talk to Sarah, the owner of Bailey Road, a boutique store that sells upscale women's clothing and accessories. Let's go hear her story. Evidence of the first clothing date back somewhere between 100 and 500,000 years ago. In medieval ages, colored clothing symbolized wealth, while darker colors identified peasants. Today, the fashion industry produces revenue of over $20 billion a year. Sarah saw an opening in the local market for a specialty boutique that focuses heavily on customer service. So she decided to take a chance in the competitive retail clothing market. Hi, my name is Sarah DeFelice, owner of Bailey Road. My mission is to create a welcoming, beautiful boutique where women can come in, unwind, and have big dressing rooms to find the outfit of their dreams. So let's start by learning about you as a person. Uh, give me some of your history, background, education. I grew up in Vermont, in Northfield, Vermont, actually on Bailey Road, what the store is named after. Um, I went to school in Northfield, and then I ended up going to the University of Vermont. You went to college. What did you study? Tell me about that experience. It was one of the scariest things as an 18-year-old to have to choose your choose. life? Choose. <laughs> like, choose at 18. Where do you want to go? And so I changed my major seven times, actually. Um, it's surprising. Can you, can you run through what the list? Yeah. Undecided, which was my favorite major of awesome. all. Awesome. And then I went into um, education, art, st studio art. Then I was a poli-sci. Then I made it to the business school. And then I actually ended with economics with a minor in art history. While I was in college, I realized I wanted to travel a little bit, so I lived in Spain for a year, and then um, after I graduated, I sailed off the coast of Maine for another two years. But I was ready to come home, and, and I was looking for something to sort of ground me, to call my own and really get just integrated with this beautiful community. So I moved back from the boat, and I started working at a boutique that was in Montpelier. Working at that retail shop, I realized that, you know what, retail, if i owning it and doing all the background stuff, covers the three things that I really love in a job. Early on, I realized that I needed the numbers because it sort of grounds me and I can make sense of it, but I yeah. also needed creativity to challenge me and change things all the time. And then the third was I just need that personal interaction and customers. And Social. Feel like, yeah, I'm making an impact on somebody. The majority of businesses in Montpelier are locally owned. The famous ice cream brand Ben & Jerry's is located in Montpelier, which helps contribute to the thriving service and retail industries within the city. 
dreams are flying around everywhere, totally. but unless you can grab it and staple a dollar to it, it really doesn't mean oh, much, it's right? Oh, tough, yeah. How did you get the money? What, do you, what did you do? Yeah, I think it was intimidating because here I was, 26 years old, and I had just graduated college, so I still had student loans to my name, so I was, I was in debt. I went to a traditional financial institution and I sat down and I had worked so hard on my business plan, like hours and nights and weeks and here I am showing them my like baby, like this is my hard work. Yeah, I've numbers, never, like, everything, it, just yeah, bam. right there. And they turn past everything and they look at my net worth and it was just, uh, you're, you're great but sorry. So, so that bank you just brush it off, brush your shoulders off, and then where'd you go next? Uh, probably to get a drink. But after that, <laughs> I went to awesome. um, a, this, this, it's a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. and they specialize in micro-lending to entrepreneurs like myself. And they went through page of page, asked me questions about my business plan, and I was able to tell them why Bailey Road is going to be successful, and I'm gonna do it. But I was ready for them. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, and they didn't. They were like, okay, we can we can make this work for you. Wow. So how did you find the space? You got you had the money now. Yep. So you had to find a location. I um I knew I wanted to be in Montpelier and there was a few empty storefronts around. I, I guess I just went door to door and sort of found which one would work for me and would work in my budget. White box or, or just plain white walls and a floor? It was not even a floor. It was actually, there was concrete here. The okay. ceiling was pretty much empty. Um, there was no dressing rooms, there was nothing. And I loved that. I loved that it was a blank space. So, so what, it, what makes this store different than, than shopping at a big box store or, or a mall or something? I think the first thing would be Sarah herself. Uh, for me, she got to know me really well and has started to you know, know my style and recommend stuff, and you don't get that anywhere else. You only get that at a small store like this. What kind of person is she? She's really funny, and she's kind, and she really cares about her customers, which I always appreciate whenever I walk in. And she just has a huge smile on her face and happy to just you know, share her day with me, which is really great. That makes all the difference. A huge difference. That makes me want to shop here. Where, where, do, you, where do you source your, your clothes from? I really like to have some clothes made in the United States. So you find a line or a designer that you like and then just buy a bunch of stuff and then they ship it? Or yeah. do you order, a, is it kind of, do you do any consignment or anything like that? I do, actually. So one of my friends has a foreign exchange student and she knows a family that is a dressmaker. And so I have actually a lot of their dresses. People love the story. You know who made this, you know? And yeah, yeah it's not in the United States, but it's a girl who's a foreign exchange student and her family makes dresses. So I need to pick out an outfit for my wife. So, oh, I'd love that. So the door isn't locked when I get home. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll knock with the bag of clothes. Look, Bailey Road. See, you like cool. prints. I should I do like I shouldn't prints. have put you away. This with a hat and just a pair of sandals, that's so cute. Very 4th of July. Yeah, it's just coming up, right? something with some stripes and yeah. stars, a hat. Why not? Oh, there you go. There's put her in like the sandals. Rocky IV hat, you know? Like, See, this is why presents don't go over well for you. <laughs> the four major fashion capitals of the world are New York, London, Milan, and Paris. Each city holds fashion shows twice a year in February and September. And despite all the commotion, an average fashion show is only 10 minutes long. Let's, let's talk a little bit about social media. How, how does that impact your business? How do you utilize it? And kind of give me your overall marketing situation for the shop. I have two Instagram accounts. One that's sort of behind the scenes, a little bit of my life, but it's still Bailey Road VT. And then I have another one that I just started that shop Bailey Road and people buy on Instagram. Buy line. On Instagram. Yeah. How is how do you do that? So you're scrolling through your feed and you see an outfit that we really like, or I'll put a pair of shorts on and then I'll put somebody wearing something similar to that mm -hmm. so it gives you an idea of how you could style it. Sure. And all you do is you give me your, I want that, here's my email address, I send you a PayPal invoice, and then I send it out that day. Wow, that's yeah, incredible. It's easy and it's sort of fun because it's, it's spontaneous, but it's also, it catches your eye, you know? What, what would you consider to be the greatest challenge or hardship that you've had to overcome? What's just really kind of got you down? In the beginning, I think it was that 
jump to how am I gonna get this financed if a bank won't take me seriously. And then since I've opened, it really is technology. It's my receipt printer isn't working right or my computer has crashed twice. So technical issues have technical been have problem. been challenging. Yeah. So speak directly to some other 18-year-olds that are getting ready to go into college that are indecisive and can't make up their mind, or even adults in the same situation. What advice would you have for them? Um, I think it's okay if you're scared of commitment. I think it's okay that you're trying out all these different avenues. I think my advice would be whatever avenue you're down at that point in time, just learn as much as you can because you'd be surprised how in five or ten years an opportunity might come along mm -hmm. and it's amazing how you can take all those skills and you're like, I can do this and this is something I've never done before, but I've done it in these situations. Awesome, that's great advice. And what, what is the future? Is there other Bailey Roads you know, on the horizon? I think, I don't, I don't know. I think that would be great if there's another Bailey Road, but I might change it up a little bit and, and incorporate some other items. Maintain the brand, but just get into different areas. Yeah, maintain that like classic, feminine, versatile brand, but maybe bring in something else. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. We really appreciate it. Uh, and I wish you, so you all much. the success. Thank you so much. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Sarah do it? Let's find out. She had a credit score of 720 and $11,000 in the bank. She spent a total of 50,000 to open her business acquired from a bank loan. She spends about 1,800 per month for her lease. The one word that she would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is passion. Sarah took a huge risk getting into the highly competitive retail market, but she addressed her concerns and didn't skirt past any of the necessary details. Everyone who came and saw her business told friends and that's how she grew. Looks like Bailey Road has fashioned itself for a great future. For more information, log on to our website and click the link, Bailey Road. on South Main Street in Concord, New Hampshire, and I'm going to go talk to Chris and Brett, the creators of DM Comics, a unique comic book store that's helping to revitalize Concord's comic book scene. Let's go hear their story. After the printing press was invented, movable type was created to form comic strips, addressing political, social, humorous, and satirical issues. The superhero didn't enter the scene until around the 1930s, and Superman was the first comic book hero to have special powers. Chris and Brett have always been huge comic book fans, so the idea of opening their own shop was a no-brainer, and DM Comics is creating quite a name for itself in the national comic book scene. Hi, my name is Chris Prue, And I'm Brett Parker. And we are Double, Double Midnight, Midnight Comics, Comics and Collectibles. And collectibles. Our mission statement is to sell fun. We sell comic books, graphic novels, toys and games, and we do that by building a really fun geek community. So gentlemen, let's chat. Yes, <laughs> let's. <laughs> when did the idea come up? We had been collecting comics for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. We had a store that we really loved. It was kind of like the uh, precursor to this store, where it was clean, fun, friendly. They had closed up shop. And uh, my brother came to us and was like, you know, we need, the area needs this kind of store. When was this? Uh, 2001. 2001, okay, so you guys started a while ago. Is that store still in operation? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's, that, our, that's the flagship. Yep. Yeah. Really, okay, w where is it? It's in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, so. How far is that from Concord? A half hour from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yeah, and this, this is the new one, so this has only been open about a year. How did you guys get the money to open up the first store? We did need a loan. You um, did need a loan. Yeah, we did need a loan. Yeah. You know, it was it was tricky because you know you go to a bank and they say, okay, well, show us your business plan. What do mm -hmm. you guys want to do? You know, all that stuff. You know, yeah. and like, what do you've got? Where's your experience? And it's like, comic books. Okay, sure. No, see you later. You know, exactly. We can't just say it's not a hot you know, commodity yeah. in the banking industry. How much was the loan? Twenty grand. How did you end up convincing somebody to give it to you? 
we had a we had a, a mutual friend, yeah. and we were like, you know what? Would you like to help us out here? Oh, a yeah. private investor. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you did not go the bank route. Did you buy the inventory out of the store that closed? No, it was a, a little while afterwards. It was like closed. a little, yeah, so a little we, gap. We basically started with our own stuff. So all of like the comics we've had over the years, we brought the boxes in, started up, and just started it, acquiring inventory as we went along. Great. It was like Sophie's Choice, where we were looking at our collection, like, all right, you can go. Um, keep, no, that's staying. And it was just we had to make the hard decision of what what's going to be used to start our dream, and what's going to be what are we going to yeah. keep. Is, is there money in comics? I mean, how, how does this Knock business Knock on my work? hardwood floor, yes. You know? Thank, thank, thank the, the powers above, yeah. With comic books, a lot of printed materials are going the way of, you know, the dinosaur because you've got of tablets course. and everything, but yeah. comics are different because people want that experience of coming in and shopping and talking about like, hey, yep. did you see this new episode of this TV show? Or what do you think about this casting? So it's very much like a clubhouse. Thing. And it's like-minded people that can come together. So you've That's created a social everybody, everybody, acceptance. Yeah, everybody that comes in, you know, we have something in common. Yep. You know, so like I might not play Magic the Gathering, but I, you know, we can talk about The Walking Dead, we can talk about this, whatever, pop culture -y. It's it's very, you know, it all kind of layers on top of each other. What are you into? I'm more of a pop culture guy. Movies, um, you know, some, some gaming, that type of stuff, though. Um, you know, like some of the sci-fi shows. That, yeah. That's that's really what I'm into. So, but that's the thing about this place, that they have a little something for everybody. The best way to say is like, cheers for comic book guys. Cheers for Every comic books guys, okay. Like, so. Everybody knows your name. Yep. They treat you like family. I mean, okay. Yeah, once you know, takes a look at you know once they're like, ah, I see, you know, I see what you like. We'll figure, we'll figure, we'll get something for you. Awesome. So, so is this kind of a social hangout for you too? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. It's... You're a loiterer. <laughs> you for lack of a lawyer. better term, though, but I can work the term like some guys stop by the bar to work, have a beer. Yeah. I stop and chat about comics. New Hampshire is home to many popular products, including the suit worn by firefighters and the old farmer's almanac. How does one get the word out about a comic book store? Uh, is it social media? Are you doing paid marketing? What are all your social sources? Social media, and it was all my idea. You created Maybe Facebook. Maybe it wasn't. This was the yeah. social media guy that he, yeah. and I was like, do we really need a Facebook? Years ago, years ago. Yeah. Facebook, do we really need a Facebook? What, Facebook's like we a college We have MySpace kids, and Friendster. <laughs> you know what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Heck with that. Yeah, yeah Twitter, we're, we're, uh, everything. You know, we're always hustling, you know, so it's, social media is a big thing. You know, we've built up our Twitter following, we've built up Facebook, and then- Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. Yep. It's so visual in here. I mean, I could imagine, are you, are you taking pictures of products and- yep. yep, so something new comes in, we'll take a picture, we'll post it, and across. You and know. people come yeah. in. Since he is the one that like started all the social media, like weird things would happen. Like I would get a game shipment, and I would text him and go, "Oh, game shipment's here," just just to let him know. Yeah. Next thing I know, customers are coming in. Like, oh, I heard you got a game shipment. Wait, what? That's I'm unpacking it. Yeah. Information, well, he man. posted it on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm like, oh. How do you control your inventory? Do you start with a blanket order from the different companies? Do you order direct from like DC and Marvel? And There's, uh, comic books are, are very interesting a lot because you buy it. So like, I don't have any room for returns. So like, if I buy this comic book, it's mine, I've got to sell it. I don't get a chance to return it back. You know, bookstores okay. kind of have that. Most you know, periodicals, like that. Yeah. You are you buying wholesale from a distributor? Yes. With it not being returnable, we have to be very selective and we use a, a, they use a POS system to keep track of all the sales. So I can know, like, I need this many copies of X-Men, you know, I went over this much, I need, you know, I sold out of this one. It's, you know, every month it's a numbers game. So this is our uh, current back issue wall. Uh, it runs this length of the store. We have a new release section. Once the new new releases get bumped, they go in alphabetical order on this wall. Um, then once this starts to fill up, it actually heads over here to where our back issue section is, which is basically uh, bagged, boarded, and long boxed, and people can kind of paw through them that way. Where this is more of a, they can kind of take it all in. You, you guys sell a lot of action figures. And we toys do. And this stuff, is kind too. of our toy, our toy wall. Okay. Uh, what, what is some of this stuff here? Uh, extremely popular right now are what is called pop vinyls. Um, every property pretty much has their own pop vinyl. They're sort of like a cute little, uh, you know, bobblehead-ish type of thing. Um, like for example, this is Arrested Development. There's an Arrested Development line of toys. Um, we have Magic the Gathering From one, the, the Guardians TV of the Galaxy. Show. Yeah, yep. Uh, there's Breaking Bad, uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, where's the Breaking Bad? Uh, Breaking Bad, we have the Crystal Ship right down there. Uh, Gus Fring right there. I oh, think we're sold out of Walter White. Walking Dead, 
Game of Thrones. The crystal chip, man. Anna this is and awesome. Elsa. Yeah, isn't that great? Oh my gosh. Okay, I have Extremely to, popular right I, now. I've got to add this to the list. <laughs> I'll, I'll put that We'll be shipping that one as well. And then how about here? And these are kind marble. of the more straightforward um, action figures. We have stuff from uh, the Avengers line. Um, DC has a line, Walking Dead, right up here. So it's sort of... You know, Walking Dead seems to be like just taking over. It's a phenomenon. It really is a phenomenon. And we're, you know, more than happy to ride that wave. But I mean, we get that with the Big Bang Theory. We get that with all the Marvel movies, all the DC, all the everything. You know, it's like people will filter in like, oh, I saw Avengers and I thought, I never heard of Thor. Thor's awesome. What do you have with Thor in it? Right this way. Great business. I'll man. hold your hand and show you Thor. So yeah, it's great. The Incredible Hulk was originally gray, but was changed to green after an ink printing problem. You have your own events or anything like that that you throw specifically yeah. for the shop? Um, we actually run two comic book conventions. Um, wow. Yeah, we started uh, our home con. It's called Granite Con, because New Hampshire is the granite state. Okay. Little, little known fact. It's local to our flagship store. It's right, it's actually five minutes away from where our Manchester location is. Um, and that just has grown into a, a pop culture extravaganza. We have celebrities come last year. You guys run it. Yeah. yeah, five actors from the Game of Thrones came last year. Shut up. We got uh, Billy D. Williams coming Did you this get year. Dinklage? Yeah. No. You didn't get Peter. No. Yeah. The one thing we learned is you've got to adapt. You know, you can't just kind of sit here and nope. wait, you know, for people to come in. You've got to look at new products. Yep. You've got to look at new events. Yeah. You're always kind of like, what's, what's next? You know, so. Pop culture is an ever-changing thing. We don't know. Next year, there's going to be a huge thing that we don't even know what it is. But it's going to be huge and everyone's going to be talking about it. whether it's a movie, a TV show, something is going sure. to come out and it's going to make people stop and take notice. We have to be ready to be like, all right, is there a shirt? Is there a game? Is there a graphic novel fall? Is We need to be ready at a moment's notice to change what we're doing. Advice to other people out there that, uh, well, first are terrified of retail, mm -hmm. let alone niche retail. Yeah. What, what would you say to those folks? I, I, want, I want to be like, follow your dream and do, but there's so much more than just follow your dream you know you have to get your ducks in a row and some of those ducks are boring and not fun and scary and almost insurmountable you know like you have to be prepared to make no money for at least i don't know a year and get get yeah. help seek advice it's out there whether you just google information or you talk to somebody the other thing too is like if you're a comic book fan you got to realize that it's a business first Okay. And, and a hobby. Because if, right. you're, if you're just coming in, you know, we've seen it the, the time and again, and it's like, I want to come in and I'm going to hang out and read comics all day. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. All it's the time. so much work. We and get this. Yeah. Is, yeah. What a sweet gig you have. You mm -hmm. just get to sit around and read comics all day. Of course we do. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much yeah. it. Inventory yeah. ordering. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I have to kind of have that separation of like, yep. you know, it's a business first, yeah. and then it's your, your, your passion. Well, thanks again, guys, for talking to me. I, I really appreciate your time. This is, Thank uh, you so much. This has been it, very uh, educational to say the least. It's what we're here for. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Chris and Brett do it? Let's find out. They started with around $20,000 in the bank and spent a total of $30,000 to open their business that they acquired through a private loan. Their first year sales were $150,000 and their lease payment is around $3,000 per month. The one word that they would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is dedication. You don't have to be a superhero to start a business, but if you do it right, people will marvel at your success. If you really want to turn the page in your career, you have to clearly illustrate your vision and be able to fill in the blanks. Worked for these guys and it can work for you. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for DM Comics. Social media is huge in business today. It, in fact, you know, I have a separate team that just provides support to all of my companies. It's, it's very sophisticated. The metrics to understand how it works and all the different platforms as they emerge have to be played like a giant orchestra together. The momentum you get on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, LinkedIn, all of these things are used in my different businesses. And in a, for, in a way, it's a form of free advertising, but it's gotta be honest messaging. People are very hip to commercial messaging on social media. I don't do it. It's a really interesting platform and we learn from it every day. It's a powerful part of my business model. 
Next time on Startup, we head to Cohasset, Massachusetts to talk to the Noonan family who started Wicked Good Cupcakes. Then we head over to Concord, New Hampshire to talk to Krista, the owner of The Place Studio and Gallery. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. And then uh, what, what is it you do for a living? Uh, I play uh, professional football for the Detroit Lions. Okay, this is the, this is the big question. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl is here? Yeah. Oh, come on, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, I'm begging. <laughs> <It's been up. laughs>